Well, good day viewers. Today we have a 2010 F-150. It was towed here just a few minutes ago because it apparently quit. Lost power and quit. I don't see any warning lights on. Uh, I started it outside as soon as they dropped it off the truck and I drove it in the shop. And it's not doing anything right now. I see it's got just under a quarter tank of gas. Well, let's scan it and see if there's any codes to offer. So I worked on this truck about three weeks ago and it had an EVAP uh, purge solenoid that was leaking and it had purge during non-purge code. Now, I don't think this is related to that. This seems to be a new occurrence. The way he described it, it sounds like it's a fuel pump or a fuel issue. Hundred sixty-five thousand kilometers. Let's do a code scan. Wants me to do it key on, engine off. So I'm going to turn the key on, key off, and then back on again. Okay, so we're going to do a network code scan and see what codes it has to offer, if anything. Fuel pump module control. So maybe it has a fuel pump driver module problem. I'm going to put it up in the air and visually look at the fuel pump driver. ECM, PCM power relay. Lost communication with the fuel pump module. Well, that's highly suspicious. Fuel pump driver module. That would be awesome if that's what it was. Relatively inexpensive fix for this customer if that's a fuel pump driver module. Compass module failure. Tire pressure sensors. Mirror problems. Okay, so that's the end of the recording. So let's put it up in the air and visually look at the fuel pump driver module, which is by the spare tire at the back of the truck. So the fuel pump driver on this one is a little different than the older ones that used to corrode off. This one's body of the module is all plastic. I just blew all the sand out of the connector. I untaped this. It lives up on top of this cross member. You have to drop the spare tire and there's two 8 millimeter bolts with 10 millimeter heads. So we're going to unplug this and have a look at the connections. So the terminals in the connector look pristine both in the body of the connector and in the fuel pump driver module. So I think we're going to investigate to see if there's any TSBs or case histories on this, looking at these codes. Uh, I think I recall something about uh, a power relay problem or a fuel pump relay problem, but we're going to look and identify. So here's a TSB that says some 09 to 14 F-150 vehicles may exhibit a crank no start, stalling or malfunction indicator light on, illuminating with diagnostic codes P0230, P025A, which I have, P0627, U0109, I have that code. I don't have the P0690. But it says to inspect fuse 27 for signs of melting or corrosion. Does the vehicle exhibit a crank no start? Yeah, yes, didn't know this. Or does the battery junction box exhibit signs of excessive heat at fuse 27, 20 amp terminal location? So let's have a look at that. So fuse 27. Is this second fuse here, this 20 amp fuse right here, 26, 27, 28, 26, 27, 28. So we're going to pull that 27 fuse out. Doesn't look bad. It's an edge fuse. Hmm. Well, I think we're going to load test those circuits to the fuel pump driver. Have a look at a wiring diagram. So I wanted to look at a connector view for the fuel pump driver module. And that part that I've got down by the spare tire is definitely not the fuel pump driver module according to this. 
it looks like the old six pin one where you could put the two fuses in and make the fuel pump work. But you think I could find it? I looked underneath the truck briefly. Let's do a search for where it is. So here's the OE version of the diagram. Fuse 27 does run the fuel pump through the fuel pump relay. I was looking up the fuel pump relay. Here's the fuel pump control module. And if I click this hyperlink for connector 433 and look for component location, it should show me where it is. Well, that kind of looks like it's at the back of the truck. Hmm. Where that red arrow is pointing. Unless I'm missing it. Let's look at the connector view again. This is an OE diagram, connector face. Yeah. Thanks, Ford, having the wrong information. So it is the fuel pump driver module, and they've changed it out to a different connector view. So why did that service information earlier have the wrong picture? Okay, I want to know where the fuel pump relay is. Wow. Fuel pump relay. It's not labeled. It's not labeled here. It's not labeled as a relay number. So I'm going to look it up and find out where the fuel pump, which one of those relays in the relay center is the fuel pump relay. So the fuel pump relay is relay number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight over from the passenger fender looking at it. Yeah, it's okay, let's have a look at that relay. So it's the eighth relay from the right, or actually left, standing in front of the vehicle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the fuel pump relay here that feeds Fuse 27. Looking at the relay terminals, they look clean, no corrosion. So I'm going to get a pin out for the rear connector at the fuel pump driver module and I believe this relay is turned on with the ignition switch it sends power to the fuel pump driver and we're going to load test the the circuits at the fuel pump driver and and also load, load test the uh, fuel pump itself so according to the uh, layout I'm going to print this diagram and stick it in there I usually do that, print the diagram and fold it up as a piece of paper and stick it in the battery junction box. The fuel pump relay is the eighth relay over. This one didn't have a relay in the upfitter relay location or the tow relay battery charge location. So let's have a look at the theory of operation of this fuel pump. So I'm looking up the theory of operation of the fuel pump module and in the Ford service literature it has typical components. It doesn't necessarily, even though you've ID'd this vehicle, a year make model by the VIN number and everything, it doesn't necessarily pull up information that's relevant to just this model. For instance, this fuel pump module, not to be confused with the fuel pump driver module, is the actual fuel pump in the tank. Uh, there's an electronic return list and a mechanical return list. Now, which one does the truck have? A uh, mechanical return list system doesn't have a fuel rail pressure sensor. And I looked on the fuel rail, and there is no pressure sensor on this fuel rail, so I'm thinking this is a mechanical return list system. Wow. See, there's a fuel fuel rail pressure temperature sensor. It could have that too with a four wire connector. I know the older ones had that. That was right at the on the fuel rail on the driver's side. But there's nothing on this fuel rail, so I'm thinking it's a mechanical returnless system. Hmm. So in the fuel system description it says two types of fuel systems are used, electronic returnless and mechanical returnless. But it doesn't say which system is used on which vehicle. I know the electronic returnless one has the fuel rail pressure sensor, but the mechanical returnless does not. Well, 
electronic return list. The Mustang 5.4 uses two fuel pump driver modules to confuel. Okay. Fuel pump duty cycle. Fuel pump monitor. Electronic fuel pump monitor duty cycle. Mechanical return list. Mechanical return list fuels can be configured with a singular dual speed fuel pump. The dual speed mechanical re incorporates a fuel pump control module which is used to control the speed of the fuel pump. For additional information, on the refer to powertrain control hardware in this section. Uses a fuel tank with a reservoir fuel pump, fuel pressure regulator, fuel filter. Fuel delivery is enabled during key on for one second during crank and run. I think this one runs when you open the door. PCM grounds a fuel pump really which provides power to the... That's not true. The PCM does not ground the fuel pump relay. I'm looking at the fuel pump relay right here. On this, there it is there. Power from the ignition switch through the fuel pump diode to the control side of the relay and it's grounded all the time. So it's no wonder that technicians get led astray by service information. Like I said, you ID this vehicle by the VIN number and you expect that all the information you're reading pertains to this vehicle when it's generalized information. Look at the fuel pump driver module picture that I was looking at earlier. It was the old style six pin one and this one's got eight pins. Oh boy. And it could have a two speed fuel pump. I wonder how you differentiate between the two speed and the single speed mechanical return list. Obviously, it doesn't have all three of these. So I decided to investigate the P025A. We know there's a TSB on fuse 27, but the fuse looks pristine in the fuse panel. It says the PCM monitors the fuel pump command circuit for a concern. When the PCM commands a fuel pump on, the PCM is able to detect a short to voltage on the fuel pump control circuit. When the PCM commands the fuel pump off, the PCM is able to detect an open circuit or a short to ground on the fuel pump circuit. The test fails if the voltage is less than or greater than a calibrated limit for a calibrated amount of time. Possible causes are fuel pump control circuit open or short, fuel pump control circuit shorted to voltage, damaged fuel pump control module. Check for any harness concerns. Go to pinpoint test KC. Well, inertia fuel shutoff harness B plus circuit. Well, this is nice. And then they use acronym to describe everything. What's ENS? I think that's the emergency shutoff signal from the. Uh, hmm. That's the relay. That's the wrong relay. That's the wrong relay. There's your fuel shutoff switch. All right. I think we best just print a wiring diagram and go and load test this our way. You know, you wonder why people just throw part at it. Let's just throw a fuel pump driver module on it. I got a feeling that's what we're going to be changing, but. Not that it's super expensive, so we could waste a lot of time just trying different things. But let's qualify the power and ground wires to this fuel pump control module. So first and foremost, we're going to confirm that this relay turns on with the key, as the wiring diagram suggests, and that fuse 27 powers up here. It's not powered up now. I have a clean battery charger on it, so the battery doesn't go flat out. Got the key in the run position and fuse 27 is live and that's going to make sure that this is the fuel pump relay by pulling it out huh. 
Well, that isn't a fuel pump relay. Oh boy, let's double check the wiring diagram. So according to this locator, there's the big relay in the corner. There's a tow trailer tow relay that's missing. And there's a fuel pump relay. But fuse 27 is supposed to be fed by the fuel pump relay. So I stand corrected. Fuse 27 is the input to the fuel pump relay. That is the fuel pump relay. And it is turned on by power from the ignition switch through the diode. And it's grounded all the time. So the relay is turning on, I'm pretty sure. I should notice it clicking when I pull it out. All right, so let's lift it up and test the circuits at the fuel pump module itself. So at the fuel pump module, control module, not the actual fuel pump, pin one is power and pin four is ground. So I get a pin out for connector 433. And I see there's a connector in between, which is a, a logical place to test and look to make sure there's no corrosion in the connections. So let's get this thing up in the air and get a pin out. So at the fuel pump driver, pin one is power from fuse 27 and pin four is ground. And I've got it into those two pins. You can see the black wire and the looks like purple and green. And it runs a four amp headlight. So let's bypass the fuel pump. Let's connect so that we can make the fuel pump in the tank run directly without the fuel pump driver and listen and check the current flow. So to make the fuel pump run here, we need to connect pin one to pin five and pin four to pin six, which are, is that six or eight? What's number five? Well, I'll figure this out. So to make it run at the fuel pump driver, jump pins one to five and four to eight. On the old fuel pump drivers, you used to be able to put a couple of fuses in, but these terminals are facing the other direction. Oh, my trouble light just died. That's why they call them trouble lights. So as you can hear, the fuel pump is running in the tank and it sounds nice and smooth, but we're going to current ramp it with a lab scope and have a look at it. I'm just going to let it run for a while. So I got the current clamp on the ground wire. It doesn't matter if you put it on the power of ground. And it's running about 9.5 amps, 9.3 amps. It looks nice and smooth. I wonder if we could qualify the other wires at that fuel pump module. There's three other wires, three, seven, and six. Number three is the control module, powertrain, fuel pump, command, the duty cycle. Number seven is the monitor. And number six is the emergency uh, shutoff from the airbag system number six so I don't think that circuit is a problem these two could be a problem three and seven because they're the feedback circuits or the control circuit and the feedback circuit to the actual PCM but I'm gonna let this run for a while I've got a battery charger on so the battery's not gonna go dead and see if uh, the pump fails but otherwise I'm thinking um, I found this connector, it's on top of the left inner fender skirt, very accessible, it's a 34 or 36 pin latched connector. Uh, I might go up there and have a look at that connector, wiggle that connector while uh, the pump is running now. And this doesn't hurt anything to run it like this because it's a mechanical returnless system, so it runs full baker. Uh, I think this is just, a, could be a two speed, it's hard to say. 
Yeah, I'm going to manipulate this connector 1530, 1581, I think it says here. So behind the degas bottle on the top of the inner fender skirt is that connector 1581 or whatever it is. I should shut the charger off momentarily so I can hear if there's any change in this thing. Hmm. I'm going to shut the charger off. So it's nice and quiet in the shop now. I just turned the fan off on my battery charger. I'm manipulating this connector. Should be able to pinpoint which wires it is by the color of the wires. Hmm. Well, I'm thinking we're going to be putting a fuel pump driver module in this thing. So I got this fuel pump running now for about 10 minutes. And I got a thermal camera here and I'm looking at the fuses. The one in the middle of the screen is fuse 27. And that other one up in the top corner is not a fuse, it's a relay. This, this relay here. And the fuel pump relay is warm. It stands to reason they're both on. That's quite warm. Maybe we'll swap that out with one of the less important relays just to see if it makes a difference. So that relay that's warm up here in the top corner is the PCM power relay the fuel pump relay and fuse 27. And I'm going to swap out the fuel pump relay with the rear defogger relay. I'm pretty sure they're the same. The rear defogger relay is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And it looks the same. Same part number. pretty warm underneath that relay. wonder if there's a compromised terminal in there. I should check the pin grip on that. Hmm. I'm going to check pin drag on that. Well, I did an interesting thing just now. It scared the shit out of me. I was checking pin fit and I was having a tough time seeing the terminal. So I grabbed this cordless trouble light and I wanted to set it on top of something here and I just happened to set it on top of this relay and the starter motor cranked over because the magnet on this trouble light turned on the starter relay which is the second one that's interesting <laughs> wow why didn't it start oh the key is on yeah wow Oh, I don't have the fuel pump relay in there now. But anyways, looking at the, this rad support here is magnesium, so I got no place to stick a magnetic trouble light. There we go. The pin grip on this is not as good. No, it's not bad. That one's a little loose. I'm going to reshape that terminal and swap out that relay. So I've got the fuel pump running now for probably 20 minutes and I've got uh, that relay swapped with the uh, rear wing defogger relay and you can see that the connection is warm but that's not a, alarming. The PCM power relay is warm and fuse 27 is warm relative to the rest of the fuse panel. Uh, but I don't think that's a concern. I've got somebody bringing me a fuel pump driver. Only thing we can do is put it in and see what happens. So here's that TSB uh, 
15-0137 mentioning relocating fuse 27 which is too small of a fuse it's not that it's rated at low amperage but the terminal is not very good that fuse also feeds all of the injectors as well so right now it's running the fuel pump but it's not running the injectors because the engine is obviously not running the uh, kit from Ford is an EL3Z 14293 alpha and I'm going to recommend to do that what it does is it relocates this fuse panel fuse 27 here I'm sorry it relocates fuse 27 to one of these J case fuses inside which is a lot bigger terminal um, I don't think that's the problem on this vehicle but I think that would be a, a good recommendation uh, to buy that kit from Ford and relocate that fuse because that's a pretty important circuit so with the engine running current goes up to about 10 amps just over 10 amps which sounds realistic for an electric fuel pump um, and I got the fuel pump relay bypassed or fuel pump module bypassed I got one coming but like I said we're going to recommend that uh, you be proactive and do that fuse relocation as well I'm going to let it run for a while turn the exhaust fan on in here so another code that I had in the PCM history was the P0690-00 and that code suggests the PCM is detecting low voltage from the fuel pump relay compared to the reading of battery voltage from the gray brown wire. It sees at pin 42 of connector 175B so that is also related to possible voltage drop on fuse 27. So I definitely think that we're on to something here. I think we're going to be proactive and change the fuel pump driver anyways. Although if battery voltage 2 it goes south, it's going to fail. And we're going to recommend the uh, fuse relocation as well. So here's that fuse relocation terminal kit. All it basically is is a fuse, a, a piece of wire with a spade terminal on it and uh, a J case fuse. Um, I have an old fuse panel here that I could steal one of the wires off so I think I'm going to do this because otherwise we've got to wait until tomorrow to get a one from the dealer and I'm sure it's going to be more than 12 bucks or 13 bucks. So this blue wire with the red tracer is the one that comes from fuse 27 It's and it goes to the relay so we're going to relocate it to probably fuse 70 here uh, so basically we're going to cut it off here and uh, add a piece of wire to it and put the pin in there this is already hot at all times so that should work so i salvaged a wire out of this uh, ford fusion fuse panel I'm pretty sure that's the same generation and that should plug right in. So I plugged that directly into fuse 70 location. We're going to put a, a 20 amp J case fuse in here and we're going to attach this to that blue wire with some uh, solder and heat shrink. So there's the wire soldered and heat shrunk and we're going to put a J case fuse in here. Let's clean up these battery terminals and put it back together again. So now this 20 amp fuse will be the fuse, uh, fuel pump fuse and the injector fuse instead of this 20 amp fuse over here. <clears throat> these J case fuses, the 20 amps are blue, whereas in the uh, mini fuses, the 20 amps are yellow. So that probably uh, is what was causing the issue, but we're going to be proactive and change that uh, fuel pump driver module just to be on the safe side. I'm going to relabel this uh, diagram and stick it under the cover here. So we got the fuel pump driver installed. We're going to clear all the codes from all the controllers. 
and then take this thing for a road test but I'm pretty sure that between the two parts the fuse relocation and the fuel pump driver we should be good to go well it seems to be running good I'm monitoring the fuel pump duty cycle on the scanner and it's running around 60 percent and it never changes pump duty cycle wide open throttle so I don't think this is a two speed fuel pump I don't know wonder what conditions it would actually command a greater duty cycle to the fuel pump but like I said this is a mechanical returnless system but it seems to be running fine I've gone about 10 uh, nine kilometers so far various loads and speeds we'll turn around and head back to the shop but I think uh, I think we're gonna call this one fixed yeah thanks for watching